Hey, it's Aaron from GameWithDudes.com, and today I'm taking a look at The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine, uh, designed by Thomas Singh and published by our good friends at Cosmos. So The Crew, uh, The Quest for Planet Nine, is a cooperative trick-taking card game. Thematically, it's about a group of astronauts who are trying to discover a mysterious ninth planet. They're having some issues communicating, so it's gonna take you through 50 progressively more challenging missions with which to discover Planet Nine. It's also from three to five players, and the estimate on time is about 20 minutes. You really cannot do all those missions in 20 minutes, but I think a session is I is I think it's supposed to be around 20 minutes. Three to five players, ages 10 and up. There also is a two-player variant. You can hear the box. You can hear what's going on inside. But I'm sure you you're here because you want to see what's in the box. This is a rule book. This is no ordinary rule book. It once changed the course of a young man's life. This is no ordinary rule because it has the rules. And then you flip it over, it's a logbook. The intention is that you would take on each mission and you would keep keep a record of all your attempts and starts and finishes and all that kind of stuff. So you can check boxes on whether or not you use certain communication power-ups and how many times it took you to complete it, so on and so forth. This is the commander piece here. Whereas this is the commander and there will be commanding, which is what a commander does best. These are reminder cards. Remind me to mention them to you later. Yeah, it was terrible. There are 40 large cards, uh, 36 that have numbers and colors. So the colors are blue and green, pink, uh, like a goldish yellow. And then you have rocket cards, which are the most powerful cards. Like I said, there were four, there's five. So you have the, the rocket ones with rockets. Those only go four through one or one through four, four being the most powerful cards in the game. And then two, three, sorry, three, two, one, sorry. One being the least powerful rocket car, but still more powerful than everything else. So there's five reminder cards, which are to remind you of when, which remind you of when you use a certain communication ability we'll get into later. And you have 36 smaller cards, which are gonna represent the missions you'll be embarking on. In addition to those, you have these communication tokens. You have five of them, green on one side, red on the other side, green when you can use them, red when you, when you cannot. Uh, this is a communications marker, which I believe gives you the ability to use these. And these are going to be used with the missions in order to sometimes set a precedent, meaning some, some missions, some things have to be completed first before others, like some things have to be done first. Like if a mission might require you to win a certain trick first, second, third, fourth. These are a little more flexible because they just order, they don't order everything. They just mean this mission has to happen before this one but other missions can happen before this occurred. The book is really integral to playing the game. You really can't play it without the book because you're gonna have individual missions that you are taking on. So if you look here in the book, let's take a look at mission four. So each mission gives you a brief description what it is. So you are nearing completion of the preparation phase. These last training phases are focused on the recalibration of the control modules and the reorientation of the communicators and the advanced auxiliary systems on the spacesuits. You should be ready to launch soon. So it gives you a little bit, some, some flavor to it, to what you're actually doing for that mission. And this means that you're gonna have three of these small cards here will be your mission. So the first ones are fairly simple. Well, you're trying to, it's a trick taking game. So you're trying to win missions for certain individuals to win those tricks that completes your missions. Because like mission three, you're gonna have two missions and one's gonna have to happen before the other. One will have to happen in the first trick, one will have to happen in the second trick. That's the mission. You'd have a lot more cars in your hand, but just for the example, let's say this is a mission. On some turns, you could communicate to your teammates because you can't talk. Ideas are in space, your communication uh, methods are very limited. You can use your communication token to communicate three different things. So if you put the token at the top, you're communicating to everybody you're playing with. Remember, this is co-op. That this eight is the highest blue I have. If it's in the center, you're communicating that this is the only blue I have. At the bottom, it's indicating this is the lowest blue I have. If a mission has this icon with the question mark next to it, in addition to having these two, meaning one mission has happened for the other, but does not have to be the first mission that occurs, unlike when you have the actual numbers. It'd be red, so you could put a card on and communicate and you would have to put the red token next to it and leave it up 
to the interpretation of your teammates as to what you are trying to communicate. So I'll say that to say the missions are going to vary a lot. Mission five. Mission five says must not win. The commander is going to have to communicate with one of the one of the players on the team. And the mission is that that player cannot win any trick. So when the cards come out, that player cannot win any trick at all. And it just gets more and more like there's 50 of these things. So there's a, it just gets more and more challenging. So you can't win tricks with nine. You can't win tricks. Oh, you have to win tricks with all of the, the rocket cards. Uh, this one is you can't communicate until the second trick happens. So there's a lot here and they get really, really challenging. So now that I've talked all this up and you're probably still like, what is he talking about? Let me just show you what a couple missions might look like. Okay. So let's say for instance, we are going to do mission three. So mission three is going to have two cards from here. So one, two. So these are the first two missions we have. We have a green one and a pink eight. So these missions have to happen first and second. That's it. So the commander is whoever has the four rocket card in their hand. So it's not player one. Okay. Player two is the commander. So everybody would look to see if you have the four rocket, the most powerful card, it can beat any other card. The commander would look at their hand and typically the commander would take a mission and then missions would be taken on by play players in the clockwise order. So now the second player who's also the commander is going to have to win a trick with the green one. And so player one should probably be the person who's going to win. Uh, oh, no. Uh, see, this is where it gets tricky. I was going to say, hey, they could win the, the pink eight, but they have they have the eight, but they also have the nine. So they, they can still be that same person. Makes sense. They actually have seven, eight, nine. So they're good. Like I said, this is cooperative. You're not really supposed to be talking. So, you know, the first player could because communications are allowed here, but I think you're supposed to keep track of when you use the communications and the logbook. They could use one of these and communicate that they have it or not the card, but that, you know, they have the nine is the highest they have, which just tells everybody else, hey, I can win it. Yeah, it's kind of early for that. So the commander would start off. So this player is going to be responsible for this mission. The other two players, they don't have missions, but they need to be paying attention to who's playing what, because if somebody plays a card, you have to play that color. If you have it, you can't play something else just because you want to, you can use a rocket card, but if you have this color, that's how you can fail missions is if you have, you know, you can disrupt what's going on by either not paying attention or the cards are dealt, which you can't always control. Unfortunately, first player does not have any greens at all with which to start. So um, they're going to start off with trying to avoid saying a certain word with the most powerful card there is. At least for right now. So let's say it goes this way. And clearly the object is everybody can see this player needs to win a trick with the green one in it. So clearly they don't have the green one. So they're just going to toss that out there. They don't have it either. So they're going to just throw out the green three. And then we come to player two and look, we have here the green one. So then player one, well, the player with the first mission wins, wins this, wins the trick with this in it. So this mission is now complete. I guess you can set these to the side and a play will continue that way. So now, now we realize that the thing that has to happen second is this player needs to win the trick with the pink eight. So then knowing that they will just play a pink two. If you don't have the color available, you can just throw out anything else. I think they're going to throw out a one. And even if this, because this is not the same as the card, because the green is not the same as the suit that started, it could never really win. 
Message. Player here is going to play the pink eight, thus winning the trick with the pink eight in it. And that mission is complete. The mission is complete. It was successful. And you move on to mission three. And that's one of the, the easier examples, but that's sort of how the game goes, where you are trying to, without directly telling people, communicate to your teammates what you are doing and why. So like I said, like in mission 11, you can't use these at all. So yeah, but then you have four, four cards out. You have four objectives for the mission. And then the first one you pull is gonna be the one that has to happen first. So you gotta be paying attention to who plays what and how the flow of the game goes. Cause you cannot just say, hey, I have the nine. That is how the crew works. And it's just gonna give you, like I said, just more increasingly difficult missions. Now, normally uh, whoever has the, the four rocket card is the commander and they're gonna normally pick a mission first and let others choose. But then there are some missions where the commander's gonna ask the crew members about their willingness to take on a task. And this can only be answered with a yes or no, so it's mission 24. And then the commander distributes. So it just sort of depends on how it's how it's played. So as I said, these get increasingly difficult as there'll be times when times when players actually have multiple missions they're trying to keep track of. That's when it really gets tricky. So that is a really basic kind of overview. There's much there are people who are much smarter and much better than I doing more in-depth how-to plays of the crew but that is sort of how it goes it's a it's, it's interesting it is a cooperative trick taking game you are working together with limited communication to accomplish an ever-changing set of tasks so the crew things i like i like trick taking games i think they're fun i like co-op games so i came into this uh wanting to have a lot of fun with it we're anticipating how many you know missions we could do and how successful we would be and despite my enthusiasm for it my family was not really into the crew unfortunately so i like this game i want to continue playing it i will probably have to play it with others at some point but i keep my family wasn't really into it because they had a difficult time understanding what the incentive was and i can try to explain what we're working together so you're trying to make, even if you don't have a mission yourself, you are trying to play to facilitate and help other people accomplish their missions because we're all working together. Folks around here are real big fans of spades. I like spades. Spades is fun. Spades is team-based, but obviously you're, you, you bet on getting a certain number of books and you're trying to hit that goal or, you know, or else. So the co-op element wasn't really something that everybody kind of latched on to whereas I did there's other games that are co-op that they've been oh yeah I, I, I get into this this one not so much this is a this is not the smallest box but the components are fairly simple you have small cards like larger cards commander tokens the only real downside I have for the game is not anything that's necessarily the game's fault it's just people I played with won't really run into it so I didn't get a chance to play quite as much of it as I would have liked but I do look forward to a time where I can introduce this to other people who may be into it and then we can do a lot more of it. So no real downsides of the game itself. It's just play with what you want when we're filling it. So that is a crew, uh, the quest for Planet Nine. Unfortunately, Planet Nine is not gonna be discovered right now, but who knows what the future holds. Thank you for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, all those good things. Uh, wear a mask. Be safe, be nice to other people, take care, be blessed.